All right, welcome back. So let's talk about this kind of first uh, event that really shaped the geologic path of North America or Laurentia at the time in the Paleozoic era. Let's talk about the Sock sequence. Okay, so to start off the Sock sequence at the beginning of the Cambrian, we had uh, mostly uh, exposed craton. Yep, that's where we see here. Kind of the height of it. It's mostly covered in water. Uh, so as the ocean transgressed fully and then as it regressed again mostly exposed so we're gonna look at the kind of this period of time here um, so uh, the rocks of, of this sequence record the first transgressive regressive event in that covered the North American craton um, the craton itself was even prior to this above sea level so it experienced weathering and erosion at actually a pretty fast rate so sediment was being dumped into the margins of the, the continent these sediments eventually you know build up to create sedimentary rocks and then later on this is what aided in the creation of some of these mobile belts along the uh, kind of margins of these cratons more on that in a little bit but remember, at this time, Laurentia was is right right on the equator, uh, right around the tropics. And if you think about the weather, the literal weather on the and climate around the equator now, hot, rainforest, a lot of rain, a lot of moisture. Well, the North American craton being right at the equator and the rocks being exposed, exposed to this heat and exposed to to this to the rain and the elements broke down the rock pretty easily and, and a lot. So there's a lot of sediment being uh, dumped out into the margins of the um, of the uh, uh, of the continent. Because remember, there's the only things that, that are alive at this point are just some stuff floating around in the ocean, some of those soft bodied, weird things in the in the oceans, in the shallows of the oceans. There's nothing on land at this point. There are no plants. There are no trees. There's nothing on land. It's just rocks. If you can imagine that imagine it's just just rocks everywhere. Actually, you can't imagine that. Just look out in the desert. It's kind of like, it was kind of like that. It kind of just rocks everywhere. That's what it kind of looked like. <laughs> um, so in any case, um, so rocks are being broken down. That sediment gets dumped into the margins on the edges of the continent. That becomes important when we talk about some of these mountain building events in a little bit. Uh, again, the, the ocean's coming in and eventually going out. Um, at the height, only a portion of the Canadian Shield was was exposed, along with a, a few kind of what appeared to be islands. Collectively, we, we named these the Transcontinental Arch, and these kind of little series of islands extended from what is now New Mexico up to Minnesota. So what Laurentia kind of looked like at the height of this transgressive sock sequence with the, the height of the, the ocean was something like this. Um, so this portion of the Canadian shield was exposed. Uh, again, this picture is tilted because I wanted to put it along what the equator, you know, what we think of when we think of a globe and how things are, you know, west to east. So, I, you know, I put it as if the equator is here and looking at Laurentia again. Which uh, would have been, you know, right at the right at the equator, turned sideways. So when we're talking about, you know, west to east. We're talking about west to east at that time. So again, the Canadian Shield that was exposed. So again, it's mostly just old basement Proterozoic rock, igneous and metamorphic rock, and that's it. It's just rock, just rock, rock. All right, rock, rock, rock. And here's some of those exposed kind of highlands. Um. So that leads us to the, the, the Grand Canyon. Uh, the region of uh, the Grand Canyon occupied the, the western margin of the craton during the sock itself, which was a passive shelf. Let me go back here. So Arizona, so if, if we kind of look at this, we look at this, so here's Baja, Mexico, so California would be over here. So Arizona would be kind of right in here. So we can see Arizona is under the ocean at this time. This becomes important. So we get weathering and erosion occurring, so we're dumping a lot of sediment into, you know, all along the margins here. But again, it becomes important for the following. Talking about the Grand Canyon. So where the Grand Canyon is now, that this part was under the ocean, a passive shelf, which means it's not near, a, a passive margin means a, away from a plate boundaries. Active margin means near a plate boundary. 
you get some different geology. So at passive margins, you typically get a lot of sediment deposited. So um, the Grand Canyon was at a, a passive margin, pa uh, edge of a continent, not near a boundary. So we get a lot of sediment being dumped in there. Um, again, sediment was kind of being dumped around the, the margins uh, of, the, of the continental shelves. And then uh, as the sock began, a transgressive event, as the water's coming in, we get this transgressive sequence in the, the rock layers, which we've looked at in a prior unit. Um, and so this initial transgressive event, which we've looked at in the past, is recorded in the Grand Canyon, in fact, in those lower, um, lower layers of rock. Uh, right above the older Proterozoic rock. So at the bottom, near the bottom of the Grand Canyon, I, just, I should say, the Tapete sandstone represents the kind of initial transgressive shoreline deposit that kind of started this sock sequence. Remember, in a transgressive sequence, we see sandstone, shale, limestone. That means sea level is rising. Regressive is the other way. Right. This was on your test. This was on the previous, just on the previous unit, etc. So, um, so we have the basement rocks, the oldest rocks we have in Arizona. These are uh, metamorphic rocks. In fact, the lab on on unit uh, eight, you looked at the oldest rocks, the the elf, elves chasm nice, it's a type of metamorph foliated metamorphic rock, and then we have a nonconformity. And then, uh, so this was the, the f first deposit. As that transgressive uh, sock event occurred, you know, as sea levels rise, sand is the first to be deposited, then shale, then limestone. So this represents that transgressive sequence, sandstone, shale, limestone. And that extended all the way out uh, to the, the western edge of the, of, the, of the craton, where we see, again, uh, sandstone, shale, limestone. Um, to look at that, so we have the old kind of Precambrian Proterozoic rocks, and then right above that is where we start to see the the sock sequence, all right? The sock sequence, uh, where we see the sandstone, shale, limestone. So down at the bottom of the Grand Canyon, uh, so here's the Tapete sandstone, um, and then we have the Bright Angel shale. And this is Bright Angel formation, but it's a sh sequence of shale and the Mua formation, which is a sequence of limestone. And collectively, that makes up the Tonto group. Sandstone, shale, limestone, that indicates a transgressive event. So again, here we are in the Tonto group, the Tapete sandstone, Bright Angel shale, Mua of limestone, it's just their names, all part of the Paleozoic, um, sitting above older basement rocks, above the Great Unconformity. And what we see, again, is this transgressive event uh, that's recorded. Now that's on the west end of the craton. Same thing's happening over on the east side of the craton. What is now, uh, imagine uh, Wisconsin, <laughs> excuse me, and Ohio, we see kind of the same thing happening. Sandstone, shale, limestone. Transgressive event. This is the kind of North American craton, uh, the basement rock, and it's being again covered by the sediment as the ocean's rising and, and creeping in. So very similar rock to the Tapete sandstone we see, for example, out in Wisconsin. So we see the sandstone out here. You see some nice cross bedding. You also see some horizontal bedding here. Uh, this is the Wisconsin Dells, cool little area. And then also in Ohio, um, the, the same sandstone uh, you'll see here, this sandstone. This is in, uh, da, 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 I think it's Ash Cave, or maybe it's Old Man's Cave. But this is in uh, the Hawking Hills in Southern Ohio, where I first went to school at Ohio University. Go Bobcats. Hey, you know what? Let's give you, since we're in a celebratory mood, let's give you part of the super secret code. Uh, I don't know. Uh, 43. 43. That's the first part. 43. Four and a three. All right, 43. Okay. So uh, again, so now we're at the end of the sock sequence, and this is kind of what North America is looking like now. Um, so we have some sediment that's been deposited, covering part of the craton, starting to build uh, sediment layers up on that platform, um, dumping sediment into the margins uh, once the 
continent is exposed again, but we have that sediment that kind of creeped in during that transgressive and regressive event. So now that we have exposed the craton again, weathering and erosion can occur. So non-deposition, weathering and erosion, missing information. So this begun, uh, begins a, a, a unconformity in certain locations because we're getting rocks that aren't deposited anymore so we have a gap in time before rocks get deposited again or sediment gets deposited again to eventually become rocks and what we do have is being weathered and eroded broken down and washed away in in some locations so this will begin the first of a series of unconformities that kind of come in between each of these sequences transgression regression unconformity transgression regression unconformity transgression regression unconformity all right. Uh, so in Arizona, so kind of through the Cambrian and Ordovician, as the uh, water uh, came in and then came out, so we have uh, deposits around um, Arizona that brought in, again, uh, sand and uh, clay and silt, as well as calcite sediment that would eventually create the sedimentary rocks, sandstone, shale, and limestone. So the, the sock came in, transgression, the, the sequence, the ocean left, uh, so that's a regression. Um, again, it left a, a landscape of pretty much low relief, so by depositing the sediment, it was pretty flat on the platform, the part of the craton that was covered. Um, because, once again, the, the sea levels, uh, oh, the sea regressed and everything was exposed, Laurentia in North America was still around the equator at the point at this point so once everything was exposed again things got broken down pretty easily once again so there was a, a lot of weathering and erosion that occurred so we get kind of this uh, unconformity that happened in a number of places that really marks the boundary between the, the sock sequence and the tippy canoe sequence which is what we'll talk about when we come back I'll see you back here in just a second <laughs> 